resources to be able to achieve our hopes and dreams. We live in a world where we have the chance to become the person we aspire to be and do whatever we want to do. We live in a world where we have the freedom to be ourselves, in a world that is now more accepting and tolerant than it's ever been before. Yet, we live in that same world where we fear rejection, loneliness, and failure. Where we fear straying away from what's normal for the sake of being normal. Where we fear being ourselves merely because we don't want to end up by ourselves. Most of us, especially as teenagers, are too preoccupied with what others think and with what others say that we stop living for ourselves and start living for others. Fitting in is like a door lock and a key. The lock is momentarily halting us from entering a room full of the people we want to be with. The lock is also who that group subconsciously and indirectly encourages us to be through peer pressure, advertising. And we, as individuals, are the key. When we don't fit into a certain lock, we attempt to mold ourselves and to change our shape until we do fit and until we can be like everyone else behind that door. We change until we fit, until we can unlock the door and finally enter the room. But we have to remember that just because we don't fit in one door doesn't mean there aren't other ones out there for us to unlock. Sometimes it's easier to change than to face that rejection of not having fit in. However, is changing really worth it? Is there ever assurance that we're gonna fit in no matter how many different shapes we take? I think we live in a world where we've been brainwashed to believe that we're all different. For example, just here in our school, we think we are diverse and we all look different, but just walking down the hallway, we all wear pretty standard shirts and sweaters and jeans and shoes. As soon as anyone wears anything that's vaguely different, this is noted, remarked, and sometimes even mocked amongst a group of friends. An attitude like this doesn't encourage anyone to want to be different. Say, for example, someone were to tell the student to wear an extravagant outfit such as leopard printed leggings and an American flag sweater with five centimeter stilettos. The chance of someone saying yes would be slim to none. And in all honesty, I would probably say no as well. Because this is a world where I overly, I overthink and I'm easily embarrassed. But this is the exact problem in, the society, in our society. We live in a world where we fear being different, where we fear not being accepted but being rejected, where we fear bullying and teasing. Sometimes it's just easier to be like everyone else because then we can hide in their own shadows rather than casting our own. The number of people actually willing to step away from that one door they didn't fit in and be themselves is actually really small. And these people are the ones that are truly admirable. Overthinking and caring is really bringing us down as a society. Three years ago, when I first moved to Ash, I wore my hair down for the first time I can ever remember. Two years ago, after 10 years of wearing glasses, I finally wore contacts. And while these two changes might seem small and irrelevant to you, for me, they were the times in my life when I overthought for the most hours on end. When I first wore contacts, I would overthink so much that people would be constantly judging me, talking about it. They wouldn't recognize me and I'd have to introduce myself all over again. And these thoughts consumed me, not only for the first day I wore them, but for the first week and even the first month. Looking back, however, I highly doubt that anyone analyzed this as much as I did. These were all illusions I just created in my brain. One year ago, after a lifetime of worrying and caring about what others thought, I still worried and I still cared. However, today, not as much anymore. I've realized that worrying and caring is not worth it. 
it consumed so much time and energy that I could be focusing on other aspects of my life that I've just started to change my outlook. I've started accepting who I was. I do this by now making jokes about myself, valuing my own opinions, and no longer fearing not fitting in. If a person isn't willing to accept who I am, that person doesn't belong being in my life. It takes more effort to impress someone and to try to be someone you're not than to just be yourself. Say for instance, you meet a potential friend. What's the point in faking your French, faking who you are and faking your personality for the first few encounters when if you're attempting to endure in a long-term friendship, faking it is not gonna get you anywhere. When I first moved here, I was the timid, shy girl that would stand in the corner and would barely talk. I would keep all my thoughts and all my opinions in my head. A year later, I finally started to have the courage to occasionally speak and to occasionally crack a joke here and there. And through this courage, everything became much easier. People started to know me for who I was, and more than that, they started to actually like me for me. I started to value my own opinions. I started to value speaking my own mind. And now, when someone asks me for what I think, I tell them. If I don't tell them my full, honest opinion, it's not out of fear of not fitting in, but for the sake of not, of not wanting to hurt them and of protecting their feelings. Two, um, two summers ago, I learned how to solve a Rubik's Cube. And at first, it was one of those things where I was worried about what people thought because I didn't just want to learn how to solve it. I wanted to become fast and good at it. So I committed and learned how to solve it in under a minute. And I was just worried that people, instead of laughing with me at this, would laugh at me. And I've come to terms with it's something that I think is cool. It's something that I'm proud of. So what's the point in hiding it? It's hard, however, to go from one extreme to the other. At times, I do still care, and I do still worry about what people think. I just try not to let it influence me. I try to stay as loyal as I can to who I am. My actions are not always gonna please everyone else, but even if I were being someone I'm not, my actions would still not be pleasing everyone else. I've come to terms with the fact that others aren't gonna judge you for being yourself, but they're actually going to value it. We live in, the, in a world where we're always under the impression that we're constantly being scrutinized. But these are all illusions we've created for ourselves. These thoughts are detrimental and limiting who we allow ourselves to become in our society. So next time you want to do something, do it. Because for all you know, being yourself might be that one magic key that allows you to unlock all doors. Thank you.